Hello, I'm Sandra, and this RDM Byte is about recording different data sets with different data types in the data catalog. If you have not already watched the RDM Byte using a data catalog within the research team, you may find this useful to watch before this RDM Byte, as it covers the concepts of having and using a data catalog. By the end of this video, you will be able to include data sets with different data types in your data catalog and how to group linked data sets together. We focus on transcriptomic, image and clinical data as examples. In the RDM Byte, using a data catalog within a research team, we covered the key features of a data catalog, that is, being a searchable metadata inventory of a set of data assets. Consider a transcriptomic data set. The metadata may look something like this, where you will have some information about the sample, the subject whose sample it is, experiment protocols, run and analysis details. We are not suggesting that all of these metadata be included in the data catalog, but some would be quite useful if someone outside of the project wanted information about the data sets that are or were collected during the project. As an aside, we would encourage that a metadata representation like this one is created where relevant, and the accompanying spreadsheet with the details filled in for each of the metadata columns. These can be kept alongside with the data set and are useful for other researchers if they want to use the same methodologies. Here are two examples. One has more details than the other. In the top example, the full metadata for each experiment and analysis is stored alongside the data set, but separately from the data catalog. In the second example, the data management team do not have the full metadata details for the experiments, and it was decided by researchers that it would be useful to record the total number of reads and read lengths within the data catalog for each data set. It's really helpful to speak to other researchers and PIs on the project or team to find out what is most useful to record for easy reference purposes. Ultimately, you want the data catalog to work for you and the team and for sustainability purposes after the project has finished. Here we have an example of metadata that could be in a data catalog that includes image data. An important metadata for images is stain type. If you have different types of data sets, look at the metadata for each data set and consider the key elements that would help to give an overall view of the data and items that would be useful for researchers who might want to use the data set. If you have different types of data sets to include in your data catalog, try to reduce the number of columns down by sharing metadata where possible. Looking at this example, time points, tissue, phenotype, and number of patients could possibly be shared by both transcriptomic and image data sets. Stain type would be specific to images. If you were to have transcriptomic data sets in the data catalog, the column stain type will be filled with NA are not applicable for transcriptomic data. To reduce the number of columns, you could have number of samples or images as one column instead of having one column for number of samples and another for number of images. Here is an example of how part of your data catalog might appear. In the first instance, the PBMC RNA-seq analyses has a set of 102 shared patients across the different RNA-seq and imaging data sets. For the RNA-seq data sets, the catalog identifies the tissue and the cell population, along with the platform and how many samples were taken and the number of patients. For the imaging data set, we have the tissue type and the stain type, and also the number of images and the number of patients. Then there is this clinical data set that sits together with the analyses data sets. The columns, tissue, cell population, analysis platform, stain type, and number of samples or images are clearly set as NA, as in not available. The data sets are grouped together with the experiment or analysis name and separated from a different group of data sets by a gray line. In this way, it is easy to see related or paired data sets. Thanks for watching. 
Please see the links used as well as links to additional resources alongside this video. I would also like to acknowledge the Cluster Consortium.